In this video, I will let you know how to enter the Blink credentials like SID name, password and Blink authentication token to your ESP board wirelessly using your web browser. So now you can enter these credentials wirelessly and you can change it whenever you want without reprogramming the board. So let's get started. Now before starting the video, let me just tell you that this video is all about coding. I will show you the demo but in the end of the video but till then you have to sit back and try to learn and understand like how the things are working in the background. So let's just jump onto the computer and see the coding. So first of all I included one library called OTA Blink Credentials .h. Now this library is written by myself whose header file and C++ file are defined here only. Uh, don't worry I'll be attaching the link of all the files in the description so you can just download it okay. So inside this header library there are other libraries as well let's just have a look. So I'm using this uh, ESP web server library, web socket server library, Arduino JSON library and EEP ROM library. Uh, now out of them this EEP ROM and ESP async web server will be already installed along with your Arduino and ESP board packages. Okay, so you just need to download this web socket server library and Arduino JSON library which you can get it by going to sketch, include library into manage libraries. So here's a search for the library you want I will type as web sockets. Okay, so you have to install this library for web socket server and after that I'll type Arduino JSON. So you have to install this library for Arduino JSON. Okay, so these two libraries you have to install if you want to use this code. Moving back to the main code. Now after the library declaration I use this if condition to make this code compatible with both ESP266 board and ESP32 boards as well. So yes this code will work with both the boards without making any changes in it okay. So what I have written here is if the ESP266 board is defined just use this library and if the ESP32 board is defined just use this library. So I just written this condition to make your work way more easier. Okay, moving ahead, I have used this credential class which is defined inside my library and created an object called credentials for it. You don't need to focus much on this. Okay, after that, I have declared some necessary variables just like uh, authentication token character array is declared. Okay, after that, a boolean is declared called connected to internet. This will be used as a flag. And after that, I have used this erasing button. Now, this is something important which I need to discuss here. Here in this code, I have provided a separate button called erasing button, which will be used to intentionally erase the Wi-Fi credentials stored in it. Now, sometimes a condition may evolve in your project that you have to intentionally erase the SID name, password and the authentication token inside the ESP board. In that case, I have just used a separate button in which you have to press and hold that button to erase all the credentials in it and then you can enter the new credentials. Okay, I will let you know how the erasing process works for further in the code. After that, here you have to provide the credentials for your ESP server. Here you don't need to provide the credentials of your Wi-Fi router. Okay, here you need to provide the credentials for your ESP board acting as a router or acting as a hotspot. Okay, so I have provided the ESP SSID as techy SMS. And the ESP password is remained as blank because I am making my ESP board as an open network. But you can add the password if you want, okay? So with the name of Techie SMS, the ESP board will be acting as an access point, okay? After that, you can add the variables that are required for your project, the functions which are required for your project here in this part of the code. Now things will get more clear when I will try to make a project using this code. So just sit back and try to understand the things. After that, let's just jump to the setup part. So in the setup part, first of all, I'm declaring this erasing button as input, nothing crazy in it. After that, I'm generating a delay of one second and running it for four times in a for loop. So basically, I'm generating a four second delay. Now why? Uh, let me tell you by just reading out this line. So after four seconds, I'm reading the erasing button pin. So if that button pin is low, I will call one function called erase EEP row. So what will happen is after the startup of your ESP board, if you are pressing that erasing button for more than four seconds, the erase EEP ROM function will be called and inside that function, all the credentials or all the data in the EEP ROM will be erased. Let's have a look inside this function. This function is written inside the CPP file. When I open this file, uh, so this function is mentioned here. Okay. So as soon as this function will be called, all the data inside the EEP ROM will get deleted. Okay. So this erasing button will be very useful in case you want to intentionally delete all the things inside the ESP board and provide the new credentials. Okay. So if you haven't pressed the erasing button, the code will jump off this if condition and will land on this authentication string. So here I have created one string called authentication string in which the data written by this function will be stored. Now let's see what's inside this function called EEP ROM config. So if I go into C++ file 
as you can see here in the ep row config function i am just reading the ep row and just saving the data into different different segments just like the ssid name password and authentication token so i have created a separate stack inside the eap rom for different data and as soon as it reads all the data it will return the authentication token back to the main function and that authentication token will be saved inside this string which is later converted to character array by this function okay after that i am calling one more function called credentials get so let us see what is this function inside the cpp file so here is the function called credentials get inside it one more function is called now this is become more hectic but but trust me i have made this code hectic just to make your task way more easier okay so you can just uh, so once you understand this code you can blindly use this library for any of your blink projects okay so let's just see what's inside this test wifi function so when i go inside this test wifi function what am i doing is i'm just connecting my uh, esp board with the provided sid name and password from the eep rom and if it gets connected to that wifi it will return true and if it is not connected to the wifi it will return false that means what this test wifi function will do it will try to connect with the router whose credentials you have provided in the eep rom if it is get connected it will return true and if the credentials are wrong or if there are no credentials inside the eep rom it will just return false okay so let's let's see what happens after that so if you are getting true from the test wifi function that means our board is connected to internet it will just print as successfully connected and it will return true to the main loop and if it is not connected to internet the test wifi function will return false and hence it will go inside this else which will print as turning the hotspot on okay and it will return false to the main function okay now let's just move on to the main function and see what happens okay now here if we are getting true that means our board is successfully connected with the provided credentials what it will do it will try to connect to the blink server with the provided authentication token and it will just turn this flag to 1 and if the wifi board is not connected to the provided credentials it will go inside this else and it will call one function called setup ap that means setup access point that means setup hotspot basically okay and the hotspot will be activated with the wifi name and password which you have provided here at the top of the code okay so in my case the hotspot will be created with the access point name as techy sms and there is no password that means it is an open network so now let's just have a look inside the setup ap function okay so i will go into c++ file so here is the setup ap function so if i explain this uh, setup ap function in very short then first of all it will try to make your esp board as an access point with the provided wifi credentials Uh, with the provided SID name and password by yourself in the main code. Okay. After that, in the launch web function, it will try to establish a web server at the local IP address one nine two dot one six eight dot four dot one at port eighty. Okay. After that, using the web sockets, we can get the data from the client and we can store that data inside the EEP row. Now, as soon as the board saves the data inside the EEP row, it will try to reset the board automatically by using this function called ESP dot restart. Now, when I tested this code. Uh, in the ESP32 board, the board gets reset using this function. But in the Node MCU board, it sometimes get reset, but sometimes it didn't get reset using this function. So I have to manually reset that board. So just try experimenting this function in both the boards. If it is not getting reset, you have to press the reset button. Okay. Now in this video, I won't be going into detail about the HTML code, the JavaScript code, the WebSocket server part. Otherwise, the video become way more longer. Okay. Uh, rather, I was thinking to create a different series for this uh, WebSocket server and JavaScript because while learning these things, I found that they are very powerful, and using this, you can make very interesting projects, like very interesting IoT projects. You can make using that WebSocket server and JavaScript and HTML. They are very interesting, and you you love to make projects using it. So if you all want me to make a separate series about this WebSocket server and JavaScript, then do let me know your response in the comments. If maximum of you people want me to create, then I will love to create a new series. And don't worry that episodes of the series won't be too boring because I'll try to make new project with every episode. So you will find it very interesting to learn. Okay, so do let me know in the comments if you want to, you know, learn about this WebSocket server programming everything. Okay. So this is all happening inside the setup ap function now let us jump on to the main code and see what happens after that so in the main code after the setup ap function i am making this flag to 0 just to ensure that our board is not connected to internet okay moving ahead 
After that, I have used one if condition inside which you can write your setup part of the code which you will be using for your Blink projects. Okay, so this uh, if condition will only be satisfied whenever it is connected to internet. So till the setup part, we have understood that if our ESP board is connected to internet, it will execute the setup part of the code inside this if condition. And if it is not connected to internet, it will first of all turn on the access point mode of that ESP board with the provided credentials. After that, it will launch a web server on it and using the web socket server, we can exchange the data between the ESP board and our web browser. As soon as we provide the credentials to the ESP board, the web socket server will receive it, save it inside the EP row and restart the board. Okay, so this is all we have understood till now. Let us move on to the loop part. So first of all, inside the loop part, I'm running the server loop function. So if we see what's inside the server loop function, then there is just simple line websocket.loop. Now this function is required to run the WebSocket server, okay? So that is all declared inside the loop. And after that, I provided one more if condition which says connected to internet, okay? So if the board is connected to internet, you can write the loop part of your code here inside the loop function, okay? So one of the function will be blink.run, which is obvious function if you are using the Blink projects. So if you are using any other thing, just like the timer function, you can define timer.run function here inside the code. So this is all about the logic which I developed to enter the credentials wirelessly inside the ESP8266 board and ESP32 board. So if you have watched this video till now continuously, then you are damn interested in learning the logic and you should be actually because if you are making the project, you should know each and everything about the project. Okay. So here I have explained everything which I have written inside the code. Now what I will do is. I will try to make one or two projects using this OTA Blink Credentials function, okay? And I will let you know how the things are working. So let's just start with the first project. So on the left hand side, I have the code for OTA Blink Credentials. And on the right hand side, I have the code for Ultimate Home Automation using Blink, which I made previously, whose link is attached in this I button, okay? So I will let you know how to copy your code into this OTA Blink Credentials. So first of all, you have to copy the necessary libraries, just like this dht.h library, which is not here inside the code. So I'll just copy. Uh, that library and paste it somewhere here okay this esp266 wi-fi library and blink library are already declared inside the code so i won't add that okay after that these are some variables which are used in the code so i'll simply copy up to the setup part yeah up till here i will copy all the code and paste it here into add your variables okay so i'll paste everything here okay now here what you have to do is you have to remove all the SID name and password part and you have to also remove that authentication token part. Okay, make sure you remove all the thing. Otherwise, it will make uh, problems in your code. Okay, so just remove the SID name and authentication token part from your code. Now here there's one more thing which you need to pay attention on it and that is the pin number. Now as discussed earlier, I'm using here one erasing button which is attached to one of the GPI or which will be attached to one of the GPI, okay? So right now I have used the GPI 0 which is nothing but the D3 pin of the Node MCU board. So D3 pin, GPI 0. So make sure you are not using the D3 pin of, uh, in your project. But in my case, I'm using the D3 pin uh, for the multiplexer IC. So what I will do, I will use any other button for the erasing pin, okay? So after uh, reading all the things, I found that the D8 pin, that is GPI 15, is not used for my project. So I will just change the erasing button to 15. So this is the thing which you need to consider before uploading the code, okay? After that, let's just copy the setup part of the code. So you have to copy the setup part from here. Just copy it. And you have to paste the setup part inside this, okay? Uh, after that, the loop part. So I will what what I will do? I'll just copy the loop part up till blink dot run. Okay. I'll copy all this. I'll paste everything here. And I'll also copy this timer dot run function as well. I won't copy blink dot run because it is already written inside this code. Okay. So this is all you need to do if you want to make your blink rated project compatible with the OTA blink credentials, okay? So if I compile this code, it should get successfully compiled. Okay, so as you can see, the code was successfully compiled. Now I'll straight away upload this code onto my Node MCU board. Let's see this project in action. Okay, so the code is successfully uploaded. Now I'll just insert this ESP board onto the PCB and let's power up the board. Uh, let me just open the serial monitor to see the response. So initially, as you can see, uh, there were no credentials stored inside the EEP room. So what the ESP board did is it tried to make its own access point with the name Techie SMS. Okay. So I'll go to my smartphone 
Now, before entering the credentials, let me just copy the authentication token of the project. Okay, so the authentication is copied. Now, what I will do is I'll connect my mobile phone with the techie SMS access point. Okay, so it is successfully connected. Now, open the web browser and go to the IP address called 192.168.4.1. So here as you can see, I am getting a web page with three sections, SID name, password and authentication token. So I'll write my Wi-Fi credentials here. And after that, I'll paste the authentication token. Click on the submit button. Here on the web page, you can see the response as credentials received by the ESP board. And on the serial monitor, as you can see, the credentials are saved inside the EP ROM. Now I'll just reset this uh, Node MCU board. And yes, now it got connected with the Wi-Fi router. And yes, on the application side, you can see it is connected with the Blink server. So yes, now I can control the relays from my smartphone and I can also get the data of temperature and humidity sensor from the Node MCU board. So yeah, as you can see, this project is working as before without entering any credentials inside the program. Okay, that's amazing, right? Let us try to make another project using the ESP32 board. So in the ESP32 board, I don't have any PCB for that right now. So what I will do, I'll just turn on and off two LEDs using the ESP32 board. And for that, you don't need to add any single line of code inside this OTA Blink credential. Yes, you don't need to add anything. You just need to upload this example code as it is to your ESP32 board, okay? So what I'll do is just select the ESP32 board. So here I've selected the ESP32 board and I haven't changed anything from the example code. And if I click on this compile button, it should get compiled successfully. Let us see. Okay, so the code is successfully compiled. Now I'll straight up upload this code to the ESP32 board and let's see this project in action. So as you can see, here's the ESP32 board and I have connected two LEDs to this two GPIO pins of the ESP32 board. Now on the Blink application side, I've created this project. So first of all, I'll copy the authentication token for it. And after that, I'll repeat the same procedure. I'll go inside the Wi-Fi networks, connect to Techie SMS access point, go inside the web browser, enter the IP address as 192.168.4.1. Here is the web page. Now enter the SID name and password of the router and I'll paste the authentication token. Click on the submit button, press the reset button on ESP32 board. That's it. Now, as you can see, I'm able to control the LEDs on the ESP32 board using the Blink server without entering any credentials inside it. So yeah, this was all about the OTA Blink credentials code which was written by me. I hope this code will help a lot of people around there, okay? Do like the video if you really love this technique, really love this code, really love this library and really love this explanation. Now, one more thing which I need to tell you that this code won't work with internet and manual control home automation project which i made using esp32 board yes this code won't work because that project was made to work without internet as well while well, this library won't work in case there is no wi-fi router okay so that's the difference so this code is not compatible with the internet and without internet part uh, I have tested a couple of projects and this code worked for them except that internet and manual control. But I'm not sure this code will work for every Blink project. So just try out your Blink project using OTA credentials and do let me know if it is working for you or not. Uh, give me the feedback if it is not working. I'll try to make that uh, part compatible in this library, okay? I'll try to update this library time to time. So that, do let me know your feedbacks. So yeah, that's it. Ending this video here won't uh, take much of your time right now. Okay, so now just wait for my next video and explore, learn, share with me, Techie SMS.